can see the loss of coulomb friction which are nothing but a dry friction so when we consider the loss we are having totally phi loss the first law is about direction of a friction so direction of frictional force is always opposite to direction of motion so if this is applied force p so then i need to check in which direction it will have tendency to move so as it is moving in this direction in the opposite direction we can have direction of frictional force so first point is Uh, the law, first law is about uh, direction of a uh, frictional force when the body is under the second law is about uh, the body when the body is at the state of rest what will happen when the body is under the state of rest always the applied force is equal to frictional force when we apply sigma fx is equal to 0 there the applied force uh, p is equal to frictional force and third one is third point is about third law is about uh, where we can have maximum value of frictional force at limiting point after that point the object will have motion so at that point the object is in the object is not in motion it is under the state of rest if we increase the force beyond further so then it attains motion so that point at that point it is going to experience maximum frictional force which is nothing but limiting frictional force so third law is about limiting friction so at limiting point it is going to experience the maximum frictional force which is nothing but limiting frictional force and fourth one is about coefficient of friction the frictional force always bears a constant ratio to the normal reaction so which is nothing but coefficient of friction so it is a fourth law and fifth law is frictional force is independent of shape size area of contact let's see that so here i am considering a block which is of a weight w in horizontal position so here the weight of the block is w normal reaction for this block perpendicular to surface n so i if i apply force p in this direction then the block will have tendency to move in this direction in the opposite direction there will be frictional force i am considering the same block in vertical position so when i consider the same block in vertical position there the weight doesn't change there there also the weight will be same right so w acts vertically downwards normal reaction perpendicular to surface applied force p in this direction then we will get frictional force f like this so if p is equal to 10 newtons f is equal to 10 newtons here here also if p is equal to 10 newtons f is equal to 10 newtons when i apply sigma fx is equal to 0 for both the figures i will get p is equal to f and uh, when i apply sigma f e f by equal to 0 i will get uh, for both the figures w equal to n there is no change if uh, uh, weight is equal to uh, 100 newtons then normal reaction will be equal to 100 newtons if uh, applied force is equal to 10 newtons frictional force is equal to 10 newtons so these are nothing but the loss of coulomb friction or dry friction first law is about direction of frictional force uh, the direction of frictional force is always opposite to direction of motion and second law is about uh, when the body is under the state of rest when the body is under the state of rest or it is in equilibrium the applied force will be equal to frictional force and third one is limiting friction limiting friction is the maximum value of frictional force experienced by the body after a point so if we apply uh, a limited amount of force the body is able to attain motion at that point so the body will be having maximum value of frictional force so that is nothing but limiting friction next the always the frictional force bears a constant ratio to normal reaction that is called nothing but coefficient of friction and fifth one is about uh, the friction is independent of size shape and area of the surface contact if you like this video click on like button for more videos subscribe to my channel the turning point